In the previous two videos, we covered for loops and while loops, both of which are iterative processes and can potentially execute code many times according to some loop criterion. In this video, we'll introduce the if statement, which is simpler than a loop, but useful in many scenarios. An if statement is useful for executing some code as a result of checking some condition. It's very similar to the while loop, except there's no mechanism for iteration. That is, the if statement is a one and done type of procedure. It checks a condition once and then moves on. The basic structure of an if statement is as follows. Typing the word if denotes a keyword that MATLAB recognizes. The next item is a condition, which can include relational operators or logical operators. What follows in the lines below are the main code you wish to execute. These lines of code will be executed one time if the above condition is met. For additional scenarios, you can use the else if statement to check a different condition. Having this condition met will result in executing the code below. You can use as many else if statements as you wish to check for specific conditions. You can also use the else statement as a blanket scenario in case none of the above conditions are met. In other words, the code in the else section is executed if none of the if or else if conditions are met. Finally, a single end command completes the entire if else if else statement above. Let's see a really basic example of this in action. We start by defining the vector a from 1 to 3. Then we want to make some claims based on the length of the vector. So if length of a is less than 5, then we can display the text a is short. On the next line, we'll check a totally different condition. Else if length of a is greater than 10, then we can display the text a is long. For all other scenarios, which in this case is any length between 5 and 10, we can use the else statement to indicate that the vector is medium. We can test this for different length vectors to see if the code works. Notice that each time the code is run, each line of code is only executed one time, and there is no iteration being performed. Hopefully you've seen that if statements are fairly simple to use. They're essentially a while loop that only executes one time. We can now begin to combine some of the looping techniques and the if statement to solve some interesting problems. Take, for example, the problem of scanning every element in a matrix of arbitrary size. Let's start by defining the dimensions of a matrix. Let's give it five rows and six columns. Then we can build a matrix of random values of the dimensions we just defined. This should give us a five by six matrix of random values on the interval from zero to one, which we can see here. Now what we'd like to do is scan each item in the matrix. And if the element is less than 0.5, we'll just zero it out. One way to do this is to use a nested for loop. In other words, we set up an outer for loop to scan through all of the rows, and then we set up an inner loop to scan across all the columns within each row. Pause for a moment to examine this structure. The first time through the outer loop, ii, which represents rows, equals 1, so we're on the first row. Then immediately we enter the second inner loop, which steps through each column of the matrix. When the main code is complete, the program will return to the top of the outer loop and change ii, which is the row number, to 2, and then immediately again enter the inner loop and step through each column of the second row. This will repeat until every element in the matrix is scanned. Of course, nothing will happen until we provide some code to execute within the inner loop. The idea here is to check to see if the iijth element is less than 0.5. So we can use the if statement to accomplish this. If the iijth element of A 
is less than 0.5, then do some stuff in the main code. In this case, all we want to do is to set the iijj element of a to 0. Then, using end for each of the three loops, we'll complete this code. Printing the matrix A before and after the zeroing code demonstrates that we have indeed zeroed out all of the elements in A that were less than 0.5. Keep in mind that the dimensions of A don't matter because the way we set up the loop is for arbitrary size of the matrix A. In the next video, we'll shift gears and we'll learn about functions, first starting with the built-in MATLAB functions and then learning how to program our own functions to perform custom tasks.